In this video, we're going to work out yet another example of a direct proof. And this time, it illustrates the type of proof that involves cases, a very common proof in mathematics. Um, so here's the one that we're going to do. For all real numbers x, minus absolute x is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to absolute x. So um, you'll notice I had to use this symbol here for less than or equal to. That's because my um, the computer that I'm doing this video on doesn't allow me to use any more sophisticated notation than that. Okay, so the first step is to write this out using symbols. So put your video on hold and see if you can write this out using symbols, and uh, then you'll you can compare your answer to mine. Okay, so here's my answer written out in symbols. For all real numbers x, minus absolute x is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to absolute x. So notice how I wrote out this statement here. I wrote it as an and statement, as a conjunction, um, because this really says two things. It says that minus absolute x is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to absolute x. If you had, um, instead of writing this, if you had just simply written that, it's not incorrect, but uh, when you started writing your proof, you would really have to have realized that there are two things to do. You really have to do both of these things separately. Now, what should be the beginning of the proof? Well, it's universally quantified, so as usual you have to give yourself a completely generic x. So the first sentence should be, let x be a real number. Now this is not conditional, so this is sort of like the conclusion that you're trying to get to. And so, it's this will only appear in the very, very last sentence. So the very last sentence should be something like, therefore, minus absolute x is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to absolute x. So you'd have to figure out what goes in between those two sentences. Now in order to do this, of course, you need to know what you mean by absolute x. So you need a good working definition of absolute x. And so that's what we look at next. So here is our working definition of absolute x. It's defined to be x when x is non-negative and it's defined to be minus x when x is negative. So, for example, if you take um, the absolute value of 3, we have to use the first formula because 3 is non-negative, and so that is the same. It's, it's x, so that's equal to 3. And if you take the absolute value of minus 3, well, now minus 3 is negative, and so we have to use this formula here. It's minus minus 3. And that's, of course, just 3. So you get a sense that no matter what you plug into the absolute value, you always get a non-negative number. So that's worth noting down, that it's always true that when you take absolute value of any x, you get a non-negative number out of it. And we'll make use of that in a few moments. Okay, let's now see um, what's involved in doing this proof. Uh, let's do some calculations that will help us uh, decide what should be the main steps. Okay, so remember that what we're trying to show is the, no matter what x you choose, uh, we want to show that minus absolute x is less than or equal to x, and x is also less than or equal to absolute x. Now the value of absolute x depends very much on whether or not x is positive or negative. So let's split it up into two cases, where the first case is that x is bigger than or equal to 0, and the second case will be x is less than 0. So in this case, we know that absolute x is equal to x. So let's continue by just simply writing out what each of these inequalities say in that case, and see if we can get that. So the first inequality says minus absolute x which is just simply minus x, less than or equal to x. 
And the second inequality says x is less than or equal to absolute x. So that just says x is less than or equal to x. Well, that's certainly true. We can certainly get that. What about this one? Well, in this case, the reason why this is true is that x is non-negative, and so this is less than or equal to 0. And so that uh, comes from the fact that we have this. So this is something that we do know to be true. And so by working backwards, we can go from here to here to here. And this one goes directly from here to here. Okay, so that'll be sort of the kernel of the proof. Now let's look at case 2. Case 2 says that x is less than 0. And uh, that implies that absolute x is minus x. Okay, so now let's plug in to each of these inequalities what that says by replacing absolute x by minus x. The first one says minus minus x is less than or equal to x, and that's nothing more than saying x less than or equal to x, and of course we know that to be true. And the second one says x less than or equal to absolute x, which is minus x. Now why do we know that one to be true? Well, in this case, um, um, x is negative, and therefore this is negative, but this is positive. So that means we can fit a zero in between, and so that would come from observing that x is less than or equal to zero, less than or equal to minus x. And that we certainly know to be true. <clears throat> so once again, we can work backwards. This one will lead us back to that, and this one will lead us to this, which will then lead us back to this. Okay, so that's the idea of the proof. So what I want you to do is go back and make use of this. So put your video on hold. I want you to make use of this and um, see if you can write up a formal proof of this statement here. And when you come back, you can compare your answer to mine. Okay, here you see the proof. This dictates that the first sentence should be, let x be a real number. And now we have to get down to actually proving that this happens. And so, I describe what are the cases that we have to consider based on the fact that uh, absolute x is equal to plus x or minus x. So I write, then either x is bigger than or equal to 0 or x is less than 0. We consider each of these cases separately. So then I write case 1. Assume that x is bigger than or equal to 0. Then absolute x equals x. And thus, um, minus absolute x is equal to minus x, um, which is less than or equal to 0, right? Because we know that x is bigger than or equal to 0 and 0 is less than or equal to x, which is equal to absolute x. So you see embedded in this the fact that um, minus absolute x is less than or equal to x, which is in turn less than or equal to absolute x. So I have the right to say, proving that this and this, which is exactly what it is I'm trying to get to, namely this thing here. So you see, I've completed case 1 by concluding that I've proved that this is true. And now we consider case 2. Assume now that x is less than 0. Then absolute x is equal to minus x. Thus, minus absolute x is equal to minus minus x, which is x. And that's less than 0, which is less than minus x. Right? Because minus x is now positive, And minus x is equal to absolute x um, from here. So you'll notice that embedded in this string of equalities, I've got minus absolute x um, is less than or equal to x, because it's equal to it, which is in turn less than or equal to absolute x, because it's, it's strictly less than it. Proving, 
And then I'm, I'm basically saying proving these things in this case. So you see, in this exercise, we ended with this thing that we're trying to prove at the end of each of the two cases. And I, I think you should notice in this proof that, first of all, every statement that I made in the proof is something that I know to be true, not something I'm trying to prove. And I made it very clear what my assumptions are at the beginning of each of the cases. And basically, it's, it's this assumption that allows me to deduce all of the steps that happen after that. It's this assumption in case two that allows me to deduce all of these things. So the reader understands what it is I'm assuming, and then ultimately what it is I was able to prove. So please compare your solution to mine, and make sure that you uh, follow the guidelines that I've given you here. So I'm going to leave you with an exercise to try. It's known as the triangle inequality. And it's a very, very important theorem of mathematics. It's used a great deal. Um, in particular, you'll find you use it quite a lot when you do Math 315. So it says the following. Prove that for all real numbers a and b, the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. But I don't want you to start from scratch in doing this. I want you to do it by directly making use of this main result here. Um, in your proof. Okay, so see if you can do that. And uh, I'll probably either give it to you as a, a guided practice problem or um, a class activity problem to be turned in. So give it a try.